Well, you're looking good, right? Next thing you've grown, shush, 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 not that old. I'll be doing good if I can make 40. Pauline, don't you wish you could be up here when Mama has her birthday? Yeah, I might be here. That's got to be here. Okay, sure. You know what? I don't have it.
Yeah, tell me, Pauline, how did you like your work on the coast? Very well. Well, uh, uh, where did you work on the coast? In San Jose. San Jose. Uh, they, there's hours there. How much? How, what is the difference in the hours? Well, I went to work at 11, got off at 5. Well, I mean the number of hours, like 1,000. Were there 1,500 hours? 1,500. You know, I don't understand this business of... Uh, of uh, you got nothing to say. Ask him about I got a lot to say. Ask him about the city and this and that. Well, well, right. 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 Ask him right. to about his college. <laughs> no, no. 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 He knew oh, you want, listen, Jack, you wanted to see if our voice was a anyway. Right. Is that right? right. Hey. You said so many people couldn't tell us one from the other. So you better do some talking. All right. Did you did you like the permit you got at Isabel? I did. You did. I did. Well, uh... You claim that she didn't get the back part to uh, tell you that. Why did you think that? Well, because the way she said it the first day I got it, it was straight. Uh-huh. But when you, well, after well, you dressed it, then it was different. Well, don't you imagine <laughs> it's, uh, some chemical reaction set up? It doesn't sometimes takes 48 hours for a permit to set in. Could have. Yeah. And, uh, two, uh, you know, you you used, uh, I believe you used lanolin, didn't you? You used lanolin for what? Well, the day we dressed your hair. The first it's day, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Uh, tell me something. Did you plan on going to see George this summer? Well, uh, don't know. I couldn't answer that. Now. I you couldn't can, answer that. Well, you know, you sort of have it back well, in my mind. Well, I have it back in my mind. Yes, I had planned on it, sort of. Uh, she, uh, well, I hope we have a car by that time. That's right. We'd have to have a new car if we went on a trip like that. <laughs> don't you think uh, Pauline looks well? She looks wonderful. Well, uh, you say more than wonderful. I think well, she looks... It's uh, amazing how she holds her age, isn't it? It's certainly she looks is. like a kid. From she does. 25. She looks like a little daughter's sister instead of her mother. Uh, and Bill, Bill also. How you doing, Bill? Just fine. <laughs> he looks wonderful, doesn't he? He does. I think living in Oklahoma does something to people. Oh, I must have. Texas is too much. They, they, when in Texas, you dry up. Okay. Let me talk Aunt Jessie, Sam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, come on, talk to her real clear. We'll be quiet while you talk to her. He wants to ask me about Irma. You know about the girlfriend you have that you told her about and you asked her if she could keep a secret? Do you remember that? Yeah. You, Who you, knows that? Well, that's about the, the two trips back you were up there. Don't you know when Irma was ironing? Well, I was talking about old age and middle of age, wasn't it? No, you weren't talking about old age and middle age. You were talking about a very young age. The way I understand it, I don't think you'd kiss the old uh, middle age ones, would you? Hmm. Well, don't you remember you told her you had a little girlfriend and... Oh, yeah. And you told, I think you kissed her. No. But it, well, you tried then. <laughs> Billy? Bill? 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 Get in on this conversation. Here's Bill right here. Yeah, Bill. I want to ask you something, Bill. Come on now, Billy. Oh, oh I'm going to be back here. <laughs> Lord, she's, I'd like to, you to discuss something. I want to hear your voice. Well, I want to know. Don't Bill, Bill, make him sit down here. Make him right, talk. Well, you I want Bill words. to tell us about Ponca City. How large a town is Ponca City? Oh, Ponca City is about 25. 28,000. Mother, this is too cut and dry. Think of something better. Yeah. Well, Ponca City's not cut, about to be cut and dry. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful place. There's one, two big, beautiful oil refineries. One beautiful I've, beautiful have you been to Ponca City, Jerry? Never have. You get a very big surprise. It's, it's, it's not, uh, it does, no, in South Oklahoma, but it's, uh, it's very cosmopolitan, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, you go back to Dallas and we'll go. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that before I make the decision. Can we get a waste free, free board? Yeah. Good. Uh, says she'll cook that privately. That? And the third night, he said, I wish those relatives of hers would just go back where they came from. Jack will cook for Oh, you really get some cooking. Well, here's your cooking this, yeah, this bunch. He'll eat, he'll eat more than he thinks, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to hear that big chair with you so I can learn something. I can hear it. Put them in the mouth. Don't be back. We're peaches. Put them in the mouth.
You are gonna yeah. ask him down. That is time. No, say, I love you. <laughs> me, do, me do too. Uh, Joanne. Shut up. Okay. Okay. Love, Joanne. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Mr. Dillon. One time, Mr. Dillon and Chester, Mr. Ch Chester was feeding everybody in the jail. And... Chester's feeding the prisoners. Yeah. So just start all over. Yeah. One time, Mr. Dillon and Chester, Chester was feeding everybody in the gym this morning. He went and said, I want some cold eggs. And Mr. Dillon said, You eat both toasts like this. Oh, you, you. <laughs> married grandfather. I mean, what year did you first meet Grandpa Harwood? Uh, oh, I used to go to school. Because Grandpa Harwood was a yeah. well, What year was that? Do you remember? No, I was nothing but a kid then when I went to school. Well, what year was that? Together. Uh-huh. Uh, well, we was about 1881. 1881? Yeah. Goodness, that sounds incredible. Well, uh, what did Grandpa Harwood look like when you first married him? Well, he was a, a look sort of like uh, Elvin. Well, I thought J.C. favored Grandpa an awful lot, Grandmother. Yeah. He was, Grandpa was a pretty good looking man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Uh -huh. And they wore boots like that in time. It was a Sunday. Come up to the knees and you can do that Grandpa wore boots all the time and all the rest of them. Well, I'll be. Yeah. Well, what, what year was it you came to Texas from Mississippi, Grandmother? Let me see. I don't remember now. I was about studying in my final. In those days, uh, you traveled on the train, didn't you bring all your food on the, on the sort of trucks or something? <laughs> yeah, they carried the clothes and the baskets that uh, they made out of oats. Yeah, uh, they'd come in that train and pack full of uh, clothes on my shoulders. The men wouldn't shut them down. Oh, I'll be. Yeah. Well, Grandpa Harwood was quite a terror then, wasn't he? Huh? He used to scare everybody on the train, didn't he? That was his daddy. Oh, that was his daddy. Yeah. He must have been quite a man. Oh, Grandpa Hard was a great big old fella. He hoped the Mexicans out of Texas. My goodness, he lived up to the Yeah. Texas. And his name's J.J. Harwood. Down all the Alamo, Alamo. The second name is his, his name. J.J. Harwood. J.J. Hart. Uh, yeah, I saw it and showed it to you. Was that the Battle of San Jacinto? Yeah. I see. Uh-huh. Have you ever been there? That's in Houston, yes, my grandmother. Well, next time you go there, you go out and look on the west side and you'll see J.J. Hart. He hoped the Mexicans hope to kill them all out. Well, how sure you're going to do that? Huh? I want to be sure to go and see that. That'd be very interesting. I'd be proud to have such a thing like that. Oh, yeah. Tell me, Grandmother, uh, do you remember when you first came to Oklahoma? What year was that? Come to Oklahoma. Uh-huh. What 19, year was that? 1916. 1916. Oh, no. You remember that? You remember when you first came here in the wagon? 1918. Was it 1918 yeah, or 16? No, we come on the train. We never come in the wagon. Oh, I, I don't know why I got confused on that. What about uh, Aunt Doshi or uh, Aunt Dolly? Who came with you when you came? Huh? Who came with you, the children? Who came with you when you first came to Oklahoma? Yeah, Grandpa. Well, what children were they? Doshi or who were they? Dolly? Aunt Lois? I say, Dolly and Cloud and Oh, it is. All of them come to Texas. Oh, you're thinking of Texas. I mean Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh-huh. <coughs> I say... Uh, no, uh... Doshi? Uh, Didn't Doshi come with you to Oklahoma the first time? Yeah. She was a young girl, wasn't she? And, and Aunt Lloyd. And 
Uh-huh. Lois is a baby. She was nine years old. She was nine years old? That's right. Over Lois. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, tell me something, Grandmother. Uh, uh, was that, does that seem long ago? Yeah, I It was very cold that day, wasn't it? Yes, it was cold. Uh-huh. And uh, we uh, come from there to now on uh, uh, on Cobb's place, uh, Lee and Smith's place. Lee and Smith, huh? Yeah. And these old trees is a burning, and I know uh, the girls are scared of them. They <laughs> got in the wagon uh -huh. and uh, covered the heads up. We drove up to the house, and we just going to live in. And the homeowner was up there and had a fire in the heater. It was cold. And we first come to Texas. Well, what were those girls afraid of, Grandmother? Huh? What were those girls afraid of? They were scared of their trees burning in the light. <laughs> it must have looked funny, huh? Yes, they were burning from the bottom up to the top. My goodness. It must have seemed strange to come in a place like this and it been the first time, wasn't it? Yes, it was. There wasn't very many people up here in Oklahoma then. Don't you imagine Grandpa came up here because uh, he wanted to get where the air was fresh and get away from so many people? Uh, he had that. He was up in Bad Hill. Uh -huh. And uh, Dr. Nash told him if he'd come to Oklahoma, he'd live 15 years longer. He but told him? He, but he says if you stay down here in Texas, you won't live over a year longer. Well, I believe that. He says that water up there is better than it is in Texas. Mm -hmm. in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and the hell's better. Mm -hmm. And he did live 15 years, too. Well, that was wonderful, really. Yes, it was. Dr. Nance must have been a good old doctor. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all our patients ran out. He had my food, and them. They got sick, and you know, I had to go and give them the medicine, Dr. Nance. Measured it out. Uh huh. None of them couldn't give it but me. He got the night said. And I'd go down home and do my work and run back in time to give the medicine. Mm -hmm. Old Lady Matthew, she died. She just 72 years old. And when I left out, the old man just couldn't walk. He'd come out the gate and told me goodbye. He said, Thank you, show that thank the world of me. Yes, and she had an ache down. and she'd run down and I'd lay down to sleep a little bit. I'd have to go night and day both. Okay. And I would mow and lie down, somebody at the gate would holler. She'd holler, it's time to give any back this medicine. In a few minutes, I'd just get up and go right up there and give it to her and come back home. Kept you busy, didn't it? Yes, I, I've had lots. I've had 12 children of my own and I... Took five more and my near raised them. My goodness, grandmother. When Dolly died, I took Sean and Helen and Elma. Kept them seven months, about 12 months. And Brother John's wife died, and I took his little girl. And kept her I set up all night with her. And uh, Brother Ben. Mm -hmm. was living in Dallas, and he said that they didn't quit carrying the young and the stand by on his sister. He was going to go get her and bring her up to Dallas and just leave the young and the Jim and all of them by the cell. <laughs> and told John, says, you just send that west and have uh, her, her Mary's name come and get that kid. If you don't, I'll do it. I'll send you. I'll go down my road and get you. <laughs> I'll do this, making a dog to her. Uh -huh. <laughs>
more hospitals for me. Only surgery. I think you'd like the veterans' hospital better next time. I think it's the only hospital in Houston. The best hospital. Have you heard from Jackie lately? Yes, I have a lot of friends a few days ago. He's doing fine in Washington. You know, he's corresponded on the Wall Street Journal. He said he gets in the White House occasionally and seems to be getting around all right. Jackie's a pretty, pretty big man, isn't he? Is he yeah, he's, he's six footer. He's one of the big boys, one of the big hard ones. I haven't seen Jackie. I don't reckon since he's been married, have a Lord. Uh, yes, he was at Jackie's wedding. Yeah, yeah that's right. He has two children, a little boy and uh, a five, and uh, a little girl, um, Woody. And a little girl, her name is Arden. Such a pretty Is that a pretty name? Oh, Woody and Arden. Woody and Arden. Oh. They're beautiful, children. Yeah. And uh, he says he likes Washington, D.C. very much. Yeah, it's a change. Uh -huh. We we just caught him some turkeys. And uh, I woke today and we... Uh, we... Uh, we woke today and we... Uh, we're spelling and we have arithmetic. Uh, this is a poem written by Robert W. Service, A Cremation of Sam McGee. There's strange things done in the midnight sun, but the man who moved from gold, the Arctic Trail, have the secret tales that make your blood run cold. The northern lights have seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was a night on the marge of Lake Nibari. I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee's from Tennessee, where the cotton bloom blows. Why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole, God only knows. He was always cold, but the band of gold seemed to hold him like a spell. But I'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way down the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold as the park is full, it was sad like a driven nail. If your eyes are closed, the lights are Sometimes you couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. That very night, as we lay packed tight and I rose beneath the snow, the dogs were fed and the stars overhead were dancing, heaven toe. He turned to me and Cap says, He, I'll catch in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking you, don't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no, and he said, the cursed cold has got right hold till I'm chilled for the entry to the mall. Paint being dead from my awful head, but the eyes are gray with pains. So I want you to swear that foul affair you'll cremate my last remains. The powers last need a thing to heat so I swore I wouldn't fail. And we started on at the break of dawn, and God, he looked ghastly pale. He crossed on the sea and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. Before nightfall, of course, is all that was left of Sam McGee. With the corpse half head that I wouldn't get rid, I met her a horror driven. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and because of a promise given. It was nice to the stand, it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brain, but you promised true, and it's up to you to cremate my last remains.
Well, you're looking good, right? Next thing you've grown, Chuck, 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 Chuck,
Tell, tell me, Pauline, how did you like your work on the coast? Very well. Well, uh, uh, where did you work on the coast? In San Jose. San Jose. Uh, they, there's hours there. How much? How, what the difference in the hours? I went to work at 11 got off at 5. Well, I mean, a number of hours, like 1,000. Were there 1,500 hours? 1,500. You know, I don't understand this business of... Uh, of uh, you got nothing to say. I got a lot to say. I'm going to be saying. Well, 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 I'm going to be saying. He knew oh, you want, your listen, voice. Jack, you wanted to yeah. see if our voice was compared to any way. Is that right? You said so many people couldn't tell us one from the other. So you better do some talking. All right. Did you did you like the permit you got at Isabel? I did. You did. I did. Well, uh, you claim that she didn't get the back part to clean that. Why did you think that? Well, because the way she said it first day I died, it was straight. Uh-huh. But when you, well, after well, you dressed it, then it was different. Well, don't you imagine <laughs> it's, uh, some chemical reaction set up? It doesn't sometimes take 48 hours for a permit to set in. Could have. Yeah. And, uh, two, uh, you know, you you used, uh, I believe you used lanolin, didn't you? Use lanolin for what? Well, the day we dressed your hair. The first it's day, just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me something. Do you plan on going to see George this summer? Well, I don't know. I couldn't answer Relax that. Now. I you couldn't can, answer Well, that. you know, you sort of have it in the back well, of your mind. Well, I have it in my mind. Yes, I had planned on it, sort of. Uh, she, uh, well, I hope we'd have a car by that time. Uh, That's right. We'd have to have a new car if we went on a trip like that. <laughs> don't you think uh, Pauline looks well? She looks wonderful. Well, uh, you say more than wonderful. I think well, she looks it's uh, amazing how she holds her age, isn't it? It certainly she looks is. like a kid. Come she on, does. 25. She looks like a little daughter's sister instead of her mother. Uh, and Bill, Bill also. How you doing, Bill? Just fine. <laughs> he looks wonderful, doesn't he? He does. I think living in Oklahoma does something to people. Oh, I must have. Texas is too much. They, they, when in Texas, you dry up. Danny? Go over and talk to Aunt Jessie, Sam. <laughs> no, Come on, now. Talk to her real clear. We'll be quiet while you talk to her. He wants to ask me about Irma. You know about the girlfriend you have that you told her about and you asked her if she could keep a secret? Do you remember that? Yeah. You, Who you, knows that? Well, that's about the, the two trips back you were up there, don't you know, when Irma was ironing? Well, I was talking about old age and middle of age, wasn't it? No, you weren't talking about old age and middle of age. You was talking about a very young age, the way I understand it. I don't think you'd kiss the old uh, middle age ones, would you? Hmm. Well, don't you remember you told her you had a little girlfriend and... Oh, yeah. And you told I think you kissed her. No. Well, you, well, you tried then. <laughs> Billy? Bill? Bill? Get in on this conversation. Here's Bill right here. Yeah, Bill. I want to ask you something, Bill. Come on now, Billy. Oh, oh I'm going to be back here. <laughs> Lord, she's, I'd like to, you to discuss something. I want to hear your voice. Well, I want to know. I want to Bill. Make him sit down here and make him talk. I want Bill to tell us about Ponca City. How large a town is Ponca City? Oh, Ponca City is about 25. 28,000. Mother, this is too cut and dry. Think of something better. Yeah. Well, Ponca City's not cut, about to be cut and dry. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful place. There's one, two big, beautiful oil refineries, and one beautiful... I've, have beautiful you been to Ponca City, Jerry? Never have. You get a very big surprise. It's, it's, it's He's not... not uh, it does, no, in South Oklahoma, but it's uh, it's very cosmopolitan, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, you go back to Dallas and we'll go. All right. Well, I, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that before I make the decision. Can we get a week's free, free board? Yeah. Uh, Pauline says she'll cook he says privately. The yeah. third night, he said, I wish those relatives of hers would just go back where they came from. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? you really get some cooking. Well, here's your cooking this, bu yeah, this bunch. <laughs> he'll, eat, he'll eat more than he thinks, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I like those rolls. 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 I like
You are gonna that have some jam. That is time. No, say, I love you. <laughs> me, do, me do too. Oh, so, Joanne. Shut up. Hello, okay. okay. Joanne. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. One time, Mr. Dillon and Chester, Mr. Ch Chester was feeding everybody in jail. And. Go ahead, Billy. Come here, come here. We're going. That little gal went. Well, it's going down the door. Oh, where was I? Start over. Should I start over? Yeah. Now? Chester's feeding the prison. Yeah. Should I just start over? Yeah. yeah. One time, Mr. Dillon and Chester, Chester was feeding everybody in the gym this morning. He went and said, I want some cold eggs. And Mr. Dillon said, you eat both toasts like this, Oh, you, you. Married grandfather. I mean, what year did you first meet Grandpa Harwood? Oh, uh, well, I used to go to school. With Grandpa Harwood? Yeah. What year was that? Do you remember? No, I was nothing but a kid then. I went to school. Well, what year was that? Together. Uh-huh. Uh, well, we was about 1881. 1881? Yeah. Goodness, that seems incredible. Well, uh, what did Grandpa Harwood look like when you first married him? Well, he is a, a look sort of like uh, Elvin. Well, I thought J.C. favored Grandpa an awful lot, Grandmother. Yeah. He was, Grandpa was a pretty good looking man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Uh -huh. And that old boat sat there in time. It was Sunday. Come up to the knees and you can do that Grandpa old boot sat the time and all the rest of them. Yeah. Well, I'll be. Yeah. Well, what year was it you came to Texas from Mississippi, Grandmother? Let me see. I don't remember now. I was about studying and I find it. In those days, uh, you traveled on the train. Didn't you bring all your food on the on the sort of trucks or something? <laughs> yeah. They carried the clothes and the baskets that uh, they made out of oats. Yeah, I, they'd come in that train and pack full of uh, clothes on my shoulders. The men wouldn't shut them down. Oh, I'll be. Yeah. Well, well Grandpa Harwood was quite a terror then, wasn't he? Huh? He used to scare everybody on the train, didn't he? That was his daddy. Oh, that was his daddy. Yeah. He must have been quite a man. Oh, Grandpa Harwood was a great big old fella. He hoped the Mexicans out of Texas. My goodness, he lived with the Rebs in the South. Yeah, Texas. and his oh, name's J.J. Harwood. Down all the Alamo, Alamo. The second name is his, his name. J.J. Harwood. J.J. Harwood. Uh, yeah, and I saw it and showed it to him. Was that the Battle of San Jacinto? Yeah. I uh, see, uh huh. Have you ever been there? That's in Houston, yes, my grandmother. Well, next time you go there, you go out and look all the... West side, and you'll see J.J. Harwood. He hoped the Mexicans hope to kill them all out. Well, I'll, how sure are you going to do that? Huh? I'll, I'll be sure to go and see that. That'd be very interesting. I'd be proud to have such a thing like that. Oh, yeah. Tell me, Grandmother, uh, do you remember when you first came to Oklahoma? What year was that? Downtown Oklahoma. Uh-huh. What 19, year was that? 1916. 1916. Oh, no. Do you remember that? You remember when you first came here in the wagon? 1918. Was it 1918 or 16? No, we come on the train. We never come in the wagon. Oh, I, I don't know why I got confused on that. What about uh, Aunt Doshi or uh, Aunt Dolly? Who came with you when you came? Huh? Who came with you? The children. Who came with you when you first came to Oklahoma? Yeah, your grandpa. Well, what children were they? Doshi or who were they? Dolly? Aunt Lois? I say, darling, and uh, Cloud, and uh, Wood, and all of them come to Texas. Oh, you're thinking of Texas. I mean Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Uh-huh. <coughs> I say, now, uh... Doshi? Didn't Doshi come with you to Oklahoma the first time? Yeah. She was a young girl. And Aunt Lloyd. And Lloyd. 
Ajá. Lois was a baby. Ajá. Lois was a baby. She was nine years old. She was nine years old. Uh-huh. 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 Uh-huh
hospitals for me. I'll miss surgery. Since you'd like the veterans hospital better next time. I think it's the only hospital in Houston. The best hospital. Have you heard from Jackie lately? Yes, I have a letter from him a few days ago. He's doing fine in Washington. You know he's corresponded on the Wall Street Journal. Said he gets in the White House occasionally and seems to be getting around all right. Jackson's a pretty, pretty big man, isn't he? Is he yeah, he's, he's a six footer. He's one of the big boys, one of the big hard ones. I haven't seen Jackie. I don't reckon since he's been married, have a Lord. Uh, yes, he was in Jackie's wedding. Yeah, yeah. That's right. His two children. things done in the midnight sun, but the man who moved from gold, the Arctic Trail, have the secret tales that make your blood run cold. The northern lights were seen queer sights, but the queerest they ever did see was a night on the marge of Lake Nibari, I cremated Sam McGee. Now Sam McGee is from Tennessee, where the cotton room blows, why he left his home in the south to roam round the pole, God only knows. He was always cold with the band of gold. Like a spell, though I'd often say in his homely way that he'd sooner live in hell. On a Christmas day, we were mushing our way down the Dawson Trail. Talk of your cold and the park is full, it was sad like a driven nail. If your eyes are closed, the lights are froze, till sometimes you couldn't see. It wasn't much fun, but the only one to whimper was Sam McGee. That very night, as we lay packed tight and I rose beneath the snow, the dogs are fed and the stars are ahead. We're dancing, heave and toe. He turned to me and Cap says, he, I'll catch in this trip, I guess. And if I do, I'm asking you, don't refuse my last request. Well, he seemed so low that I couldn't say no, and he said with a sort of moan. It's a cursed cold. It's got right hold till I'm chilled for the entry to the bone. It ain't being dead from my awful head, but the ice and grave. I want you to swear that foul affair you will cremate my last remains. The pile's last need a thing to heat, so I swore I wouldn't fail. And we started on at the break of dawn, but God, he looked ghastly pale. He crossed on the sleigh and he raved all day of his home in Tennessee. And before nightfall, the corpse was all that was left of Sam McGee. With the corpse half here that I wouldn't get rid, I met her a horror driven. There wasn't a breath in that land of death, and because of a promise given. It was nice to the same, it seemed to say, you may tax your brawn and brain, but you promised true, and it's up to you to cremate my last remains. 